Well, I think um, Lucifer body jumping and the hunt for Lucifer is a good story. Certainly, uh, the return of Mom is um, gives us a lot of uh, story opportunities. Um, we're very interested in that. And this uh, British Men of Letters that we introduced late in last season uh, are going to give us a lot of stories. Um, you know, the overarching uh, mythology is not as big this year as it was last year because I don't know how we could necessarily duplicate that. Um, but our plan is, is to be a little more intimate, a little more personal, uh, get back to our roots a little bit more in terms of the standalones that we do. Um, but, you know, first half, I would say uh, it's sort of more the hunt for Lucifer, and the second half is kind of more. Uh, the British men of letters who don't quite see things the way uh, our guys do. Any interesting guest stars for Lucifer? <laughs> the body? Uh, well, our first Lucifer is uh, going into the body of a uh, aging rock star, and that's going to be played by Rick Springfield, so we're really uh, pretty excited about that. Yeah. With the standalones, what uh, monsters have you got coming up? Um, well, we're bringing, um, I don't know if you remember the, the tool, the, uh, the uh, German necromancers, they're coming back. Um, that's, they're good. <laughs> um, and then, um, just sort of, you know, one thing we always say we pride ourselves on is that try not to necessarily create a new monster, but take monsters that you might be familiar with, but give them their own stories. Um, and that's probably worked best for us. Uh, alpha Vampire, uh, the good vampire, the, the girl, you know, when we did the um, found footage episode, it became a werewolf, you know, those are all interesting characters. Um, and they can really help drive stories, so, you know, not doing cardboard cutout monsters where it's just the hunt that's the thing, but what are these, you know, what are these monsters like? How do our boys feel about them? One thing that's different than from our guys with the British Men of Letters is the British Men of Letters, it's, everything's black and white. Either you're good or you're bad. If you're a monster, you're bad. They're not interested in your story, you know, where our guys have learned over the years. Sometimes there's a, a story to tell, and you know, in the case, question of Kate, that werewolf, you know, they were cool not hunting her down. Um, the British Men of Letters don't have that that idea at all. So um, is that going to cause a problem with the boys? Oh yeah, <laughs> that's more. That's a little more second half of the season stuff. But uh, yeah, they're going to knock heads pretty pretty good. You know. <laughs> One that I can talk about. I know we used to have, you know, we, we, they, they give us very s specific instructions. You can't give this away, you can't give that away. Um, well, I, th I think the episode with the, uh, with the uh, tool is really, uh, it, it is really a good episode. And it's, um, um, Hitler will play a part in it. That's about <laughs> as much as I can tell you. <laughs> Any episodes like Baby? Coming up, like uh, uh, we haven't planned anything like that. You know, that was um, that was really Robbie Thompson's brainstorm. Was awesome uh, um, you know, and we had the right guy directing it and Tom Wright. A very difficult episode to do, um, but that's the kind of thing that we, um, you know, over the years we we've, we've embraced. But you know, so maybe we get pitched six, seven crazy episodes a year, one will be, you know, you say, okay, we'll, we'll go with that, changing channels was that kind of episode, certainly Baby was, French mistake. Um, you know, we have a lot of new writers on staff this year, I think we're going to sort of, just sort of find out what their strengths and weaknesses are and see if any of them can... Hmm? Who are some of the new writers? Uh, a couple of them are off the screen. Um, Steve Yaki uh, is one guy's name, and then we have a guy, Davey Perez, and they're all kind of, one thing we wanted to go for was, you know, find some fresh voices. Um, we're going to miss Robbie. Robbie was, was great, um, but uh, so far so good with the, with the new writers. 
And, um, you know, we'll see. And if somebody, you know, has sort of cut their teeth and done the job we want, they come in with a kind of a baby type of episode, you know, we, we, we certainly don't shy away from them, but we're very careful before we do them because you can really... Coming into season 12, is there any seeds developing of an end game? In game for the... End game in terms of the narrative. For the series? Yeah. No. <laughs> Not in the... Do- something you might want to lead towards in 15 seasons. Well, uh, you know, we do discuss this all the time <laughs> in a very, you know, way that is, is not real because we don't we don't see the end in sight, sure. you know, and, you know, some days we see them going off a cliff holding hands in the, in the uh, Impala, <laughs> and other days they just ride off in the sunset in the Impala, so <laughs> we'll worry about that when we get there, I guess. Uh, just ask about Mary coming back. And, and what's your relationship with the boys going to be like? It's, uh, it's complicated, you know, they, they really don't know her, um, she doesn't know them, she's a person who's out of time, you know, when, when she passed away there was no internet, uh, you know, maybe it was the cell phones were that big. Um, and she has, you know, been in heaven, and our heaven is, is your fondest memories, and her fondest memories are this baby and this, you know, this little boy. Um, and there's this whole 30-year gap that she doesn't know anything about. Um, so it's a complicated, interesting uh, relationship, and we're, we're really happy to have Samantha back. It's great. Yeah.